I would like to thank the Royal Society of Victoria for the opportunity to present my PhD studies today, which involves the generation of organoid to study pancreatic cancer and identify new treatment opportunities for patients. Pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers in Australia and worldwide. The normal pancreas is an important organ for digestion and the control of our blood glucose level. Pancreatic cancer can develop when certain genes become mutated in the cells of the pancreas. There are no blood tests for early detection of this disease. The symptoms are often weak, and the location of the pancreas behind other large organs make diagnosis challenging. As a result, pancreatic cancer is often diagnosed when the cancer has already spread to other parts of the body, most commonly the lung, liver, and peritoneal cavity. There is an increasing incidence of this cancer, and it is now the third leading cause of cancer death in Australia. Pancreatic cancer is also the second most lethal cancer in Australia, with only one in 10 patients can survive past five years. And this hasn't changed in the past decade. But what this tells us is that current treatments available to the patients aren't really working. Pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma PDEC accounts for 90% of pancreatic cancer and pancreatic tumors can are divided into two human differentiation grades by pathologists. The low-grade PDEX have well-formed glandular structures shown by the ring of cells here, while in high-grade tumors, cancer cells are poorly ordered with no structures. The green cells are called fibroblasts that surround the cancer cells and form a physical shield that can help the cancer to grow. And this shield can also stop treatments from getting to the cancer cells. These pink images here are the images of the tumors we actually see under the microscope in the lab. In the lab, I can also use a technique called immunohistochemistry to identify the cancer cells and the fibroblasts, which are shown by the brown colors here. In my PhD, my goal was to understand why high-grade tumor occurs, because these patients have poor survival. If I could understand this question, I could find a new opportunity for treatment. There are many models we can use to study cancers. Here's a cartoon showing what a tumor looks like. There are normal cells, cancer cells, immune cells, blood vessels, and the fibroblasts that I've just shown you in the previous slide. We can take tumor cells from a patient and grow them as monolayer cell lines, which only allows cancer cells to grow on a plastic. We can grow cancer cells in mice. This allows the fibroblasts to support the cancer cells and they grow in 3D. Over the last decade, organoids have gained interest in the cancer field. And these are mini tumors where cancer cells from mice or people are grown in a jelly called metrogel, allowing them to grow in 3D. Many studies have shown that this method allows cancer cells to grow like original tumor cells and can be higher throughput compared to methods above. And currently, there is no pancreatic cancer organoid biobank in Australia. So this brings me to my PhD project, which involved the generation and characterization of pancreatic cancer organoid biobanks. Here's a cartoon showing pancreatic cancers in different patients. The tumors in each patient are very different, shown by the circles with different colors here. We try to generate organoids from tumors from different patients to widely capture the differences in pancreatic cancer. We have successfully generated 33 primary tumor organoids and five metastatic tumor organoids from the patients. However, due to the nature of surgery, it is challenging and near impossible to obtain the both primary and metastatic tumors from the same patients. Often, the metastatic tumors can be quite different from the primary tumors. It's shown as the squares here with different colors from the primary tumors. And we also can't get normal pancreas from the cancer patients to generate normal pancreatic organoids. To overcome this issue, I also use a mouse model that allows us to generate healthy normal pancreas organoids and organoids from both primary and metastatic tumors from the same mouse to study the differences between tumors. I've generated five normal, nine primary tumor organoids, and eight metastatic tumor organoids from mice. Interestingly, in both patient-derived and mouse-derived organoids, I saw two different morphologies or shapes when I looked under the microscope. The first one was glandular, where the organoid is like a balloon with empty space in the middle. What we'll see in this video is the organoid in 3D, Imagine a slice of watermelon into different slices. Each image changes the slice of the watermelon or organoid from top to bottom.
At each of the circle as an individual overnight, they can clearly see the empty black space inside the overnights. In contrast, the solid overnight looks like a solid ball. In going through this video, you can see that there's no black space in the middle of the overnight and it is full of cells. So I wanted to know what caused the overnight to have different morphologies. Genes in the cell control how the cells behave. There are some genes that cause the solid organoids to be solid, indicated by the yellow dots here. So I grouped all the glandular and solid organoids from patients into two groups and compared the level of expression of different genes. As this is a public seminar, I can't tell you exactly which gene is my favorite, but I found that one gene, the gene X, which is highly expressed by the solid organoids. Shown here by the individual dots here, where each dot represents an organoid from a patient. I'm currently using a technique called CRISPR, which allows me to edit the genes. And using this technique, I've removed this gene from the cancer cells. To see if the solid organoids can change into a glandular ones, and this will tell me if gene X has a role in organoid morphology. I also wanted to know if the solid organoid morphology was associated with high-grade tumors. So I transplanted the mouse organoid into mice to generate tumors similar to what I've shown you in patients before. Then, I look at the differentiation grade of the tumors. 75% of the glandular organoids form low-grade tumor, and nearly 90% of the solid organoids form high-grade tumor. So this result suggested that the organoid morphology could predict tumor grade. However, science is never straightforward. I found that 25% of the glandular organoid could grow as a high-grade tumors shown in this box and the arrow here. So this got me thinking. Cancer grow because of changes in their genes, but I also told you at the start that the cells around a cancer, the fiber, this fibroblast, can alter how a cancer grows. And fibroblasts can release a substance called cytokine, which the cells use to communicate with each other. And I wonder if this might be how some glandular organoids form high-grade tumors. So to study the cytokine, I compare between the low-grade and the high-grade tumors generated by the organoids. And I saw this cytokine Y was higher in the high-grade tumors. Each circle represents an individual tumor. So I exposed the organoids to cytokine Y, and I saw that the glandular organoids changed to a solid ones. You can see here the green, the green glandular morphology changed to the blue solid. Some of the solid ones changed to a branching phenotype, shown in brown here, which we only observe in aggressive tumors, and this phenotype is commonly associated with tumor metastasis. So this result suggested that cytokine Y can cause the cancer cells to change from a glandular type to a solid type, which also can drive tumor differentiation and progression. To summarize, I showed that both patients and mouse derived organoids have two morphologies, the glandular and the solid, and this can be used to study tumor differentiation known as tumor grade. Discovered using organoids, i shown that changes in gene levels in cancer cell are associated with tumor differentiation. And discovered using mice, also show you that factors secreted by the cells that surrounding a cancer cell can lead to changes in organoid morphology and link to differentiation. This means that we need to think about the drugs that target cancer cells and the cells that surround the cancer in order to prevent the prog progression of the cancer. I would like to thank everyone that has supported me during my PhD, including my supervisor here in blue, Tracy, Sean, and Fred, and those that have assisted with me by completion, for completion of the experiments shown here in green. And none of the work we do would be possible without a patient whose selflessness contributed to these studies. And I hope one day my PhD work can benefit these patients. Thank you for listening.